Hello and welcome to ABD TV where we aim to ask all those burning questions, clear up the confusions and leave you brimming with knowledge. Today we're tackling the murky waters of LED bulbs, more specifically the hassles of the dreaded canvas error codes. So what do I mean with canvas error codes? Well, more modern vehicles are all about sensors, warnings and messages. When something goes wrong on your car, you'll often get some notification of this on your dash. This could be a simple warning light illuminating or an actual written message. In the case of bulbs, when you get a failure, your car will certainly let you know. This system is commonly referred to as a canvas system. So of course these errors are very useful and a great addition to modern vehicles, so what's the problem? Well, the problem is with false positives created with aftermarket products such as LED bulbs. The most common way a canvas system will check if a bulb is working or not is to measure the resistance on the circuit. Some vehicles measure the total circuit resistance, others check individual bulbs, but they're checking for the characteristics of a normal filament bulb. Now, one of the core selling points of an LED bulb is the lower power draw. Who doesn't want an extra bit of fuel saving, especially with the likes of caravans and motorhomes? Now, I won't bore you with the physics here, but less power means more resistance. So your vehicle camber system is therefore going to see something it's not expecting and flag up an error message. In some cases, it will even cut the power to that circuit, meaning your perfectly good LED bulb fails to illuminate. So how do we get around this? Well, there are two main ways to overcome this problem, and I'm going to take you through both of these here today. The first and most simple solution is to fit a canvas compatible bulb. Now, bulbs like these 2020 Cree LEDs and some of the Ring Premium range have additional resistors built into them to adjust the characteristics of the bulb. This brings them closer to the parameters that your car is looking for. As these are direct replacements for your existing bulbs, these will always be our first recommendation of what to try. Now in 95% of cases that will be enough to overcome the issue. However, some vehicles can be particularly fussy and still throw up an error. The issue is with the amount of resistance that would need to be put into a bulb for it to match a filament bulb. The resistor would simply be too big and too hot with current technology. The heat from this resistor would probably cause it to fail fairly instantly. Therefore, manufacturers can only try and get as close as they can and hope it falls within the required levels. Now, in cases where you simply have a super fussy vehicle and even a canvas LED bulb doesn't cut it, we have to move on to our second option and add this resistance another way. This is where resistor kits like this one from Osram come in. And this might sound like it's getting complex, but it's actually very straightforward. I'll show you how to do this now. Okay, so here I'm going to take you through the Osram 5 watt resistor kit. Um, so first, this is the rear of a common um, rear cluster and you've got the, all the different bulb holders here. That, this particular one is a, a 382 bayonet fitting. Um, that just blocks in here, here. And you'll see on the back, you've got the wires uh, here, a green and a, and a black wire. This will be the positive and the earth. Um, don't always go by these colors. Your, your car may be different um, and they use various colors. Black isn't always earth, green's not always positive, but in, in this case, you know, that would be the one to look for. Um, I'm not going to actually connect it onto this onto this unit here. I've, I've got a bulb holder here ready to show you. So this is a, a 501 wedge bulb holder uh, and this would this would commonly be used for your side lights. Uh, so we're going to just connect the 5 watt resistor that's here. It's gold resistor. It's got this heat sink around it to keep it cool. Um, you can, it has two little screw holes. You can, if you've got the right space, connect it onto part of the bodywork and that will help with a bit of heat dissipation but yeah it's not too much of an issue as long as it's not touching anything any kind of soft plastics then that should be fine um, and we've got some scotch locks that come as part of the kit as well now in these scotch locks this end panel here is what we need to be concentrating on there's two grooves uh, on there I'm not sure how well you can see on the video but you've got one groove that goes all the way through and then the second groove has a little stop part at the, at the top there. What we want to do is to take the bulb bulb wire, which in the case of the uh, 
unit would, would be the one attached to the holder. And we want to put that through the, the full groove, the one that goes all the way through, get that locked into place and just fold over the scotch lock with that through that groove and just clip it in place. Then we take the resistor wire and we're looking to connect one leg of the resistor here to one of the wires and the other leg to the other wire. That's called connecting in parallel. Um, so we just take the one of the wires here that we've got and we just poke it through the, the hole in the bottom. It's just quite easy. Up to the, up to the natural stop, put it in place and then we take the, the metal splice, fold it over and just push that down into place. Now at this point, I normally use a set of pliers just to crimp that fully down and just lock that into place. And there you have it, that's one, that's one of the legs done. Just give it a little tug just to make sure that it's fully fully spliced in. If it's not, these do un unlatch and you can re redo them, um, but that one's perfectly fine. And then we'll take the second one and you just simply repeat the process for the second one. So we're looking at the, the wire, the bulb holder wire goes through the full groove and we just push that over, clip that into place. And then take the resistor wire, put it through the hole in the bottom, up to the stop, fold over the splice, push it in, take the pliers, just push that down to make sure it fully splices into place. A little bit of tug, yeah, that's all in place. And there you have it, one resistor connected across the across in parallel to the bulb holder and that will add the correct resistance into the circuit. And that's it, simple. So there you have it, now you're an expert on LED bulbs and canvas issues. If you have any questions on this, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Also, if you have any other general questions you'd like to see us cover in a future ABD TV episode, please send them in via social media or via email. Until next time, take care and be brilliant.